Hello, Lieutenant Evans here with you today. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys about some new equipment. Wait, what? More new equipment? Yes, as you guys know, in the medical field, it's an ever evolving entity. There's always new treatment modalities, new medications, and yes, new equipment. So I'm happy to say that everybody is gonna be issued a mechanized bio suit on their trucks. Let's do a little demonstration. So what do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Well, sorry. We're not really getting mechanized bio suits, but what I am here to talk to you about today is our new contingency airway, the iGel. We're gonna be bringing the iGel on board to replace the CombiTube airway device. I know you all clearly understand the progression of airway control in the unresponsive patient without a gag reflex. But just in case you forgot, let's recap. So we're gonna start with using an OPA and a BVM. We're gonna properly size that OPA, properly insert it. We're gonna utilize good BVM techniques. We're gonna get a good seal, head tilt if we're able to, good CE technique, and we're gonna deliver effective ventilations. That should be our bread and butter as far as basic airway control is concerned. Then we're gonna to progress to endotracheal intubation. That is our gold standard and should be well within our wheelhouse here at Mandy County as far as our paramedics are concerned. If we encounter some issues with endotracheal intubation, we can utilize the bougie to help us facilitate that. If we have unsuccessful attempts at intubation, we can progress to the King Vision. It is only after we've exhausted those devices that we will move to the eye gel, which will be our new contingency airway. I hope you all clearly understand that progression. If there's ever any questions, let us know here at training. Your eye gel is gonna come in three sizes. A three, a four, and a five. They're also color coded to help you remember. Three is a yellow, four is a green, and five is an orange. Since it's a contingency airway, we're not gonna carry a lot of these on the truck. You're gonna have three in the truck, in the airway compartment, and you'll have three in your airway bag, one of each size. The Agile comes in what we call a rhesus pack. The size of the Agile you use is based upon the weight of your patient. As you can see in number three, it's rated for patients from 30 to 60 kilograms. And number four is for patients 50 to 90 kilograms. And a number five is for your patients that are 90 kilograms and above. For Heavy Hank here, I've selected the number five eye gel. The number five is properly sized for patients 90 kilos and above. Now Hank's a pretty big guy so I figured he needs a number five. Let's open the rhesus pack and see what's inside. So when we open the package, you can see we have the stabilizer strap with the OptiLube gel. We have this little tray, which we'll talk more about in a second. Then we have the eye gel itself. Whenever you grasp the eye gel from the package, you wanna make sure you only touch it from the bite block area up. We don't really wanna put our hands in the area that's gonna be introduced into the patient's mouth. So let's carefully pick it up. And I mentioned that bite block area. If you look closely at the eye gel, you can see this little convex area right there. So from this point up is the bite block area. So we don't really wanna to touch anything below the bite block area. So a couple of the features that the eye gel has, it has this non-inflatable cuff area here. It has this, what we call, this area here is called the buccal stabilizer. We'll talk more about that in a second. It has the integral bite block, like I mentioned. It has these hooks where the stabilizer strap will go. It has a supplemental oxygen port. It has another channel here for gastric suctioning. And then it has the area here, which will connect our BVM to. One of the great features about the eye gel 
is it has this non-inflatable area here, unlike other traditional LMAs, which is a great time saver. Instead, it has this gel-like substance, which is specially designed to mimic the anatomy of the laryngeal inlet. Another feature that the eye gel has is this gastric channel. The opening is here, and it runs all the way down the eye gel, and there's an opening in the bottom. This channel serves three primary functions. It provides an early warning system, so when this is inserted into the patient's airway, since it's clear, you can start to see gastric contents will start to come up that channel. It also provides an area for suction, so you can stick a suction catheter down through the eye gel and suction out gastric contents. It also allows for air to escape from the stomach. The eye gel also has this widened area here. It's called the buccal cavity stabilizer. And what it does is it's nice and flexible, so it naturally adapts to the patient's or pharyngeal anatomy. It also, when it's in the patient's airway, it res resists rotation. When it comes time to insert the eye gel, remember we want to have the proper size, you want to take your stabilizer strap and your little pack of lube and you want to set that aside. And keep it handy because you're going to need it. Now, when you remove the eye gel from the tray, remember we don't want to touch the area below the integral bite block. So let's grasp it, hold it in that area above around the bite block. Keep your tray handy because you need it. Because you want to take your lube, your pack of lube, open it up and put a nice bolus of it right there in the front of that tray. We're going to lube the cuff of the eye gel, the back, the front, and then each side with a thin layer of the lube. I'm not going to actually use the lube on Hank here because it would just create a really awkward science experiment down in his mouth if I did that. So now when we go to insert it, you want to grasp it firmly in the area of the integral bite block. And it's always best to have the head and the neck in a flex position. If you can't do that, that's okay. You can insert it with the head in a neutral position. So we want to take the gel portion of the cuff and rest it against the hard palate and push it in a downward direction, steady even pressure until we meet that definitive resistance. Now the cuff of the eye gel should re be resting on the laryngeal framework and there's a black line here and that should be resting on the incisors. You can now have somebody ventilate the patient. Now we will need to secure the eye gel in place with the stabilizing strap. We want to put the strap behind the patient's head and using the appropriate holes on the strap, hook it to the hook ring. Now we want just enough tension to hold the eye gel in place, but not too much that will cause trauma to the patient. And some adjustment of the strap may be necessary while the eye gel is in place. When ventilating your patient with the eye gel in place, we still want to look for all those good signs of proper ventilation. We want to look for good rise and fall of the chest, good equal bilateral lung sounds, good pulse oximetry, and you can still use your capnography in line with the eye gel. It should still give you a good waveform. So remember, when the eye gel is in place, we always want to be ventilating our patient. For training purposes, I'm not going to be doing that because I want to explain a couple things. I want to point out a couple other features that the eye gel has. It has here in the front, this is a supplemental oxygen port. It's for passive oxygen delivery. We would not be utilizing the supplemental oxygen port. Here at Manatee County, whenever the eye gel is in place, we'll be utilizing the BVM attached to 100% oxygen. Another feature of the eye gel is the gastric port. The gastric port has a tube that runs all the way down into the patient's esophagus. So you can use a French suction catheter. You can introduce it into the gastric port and suction gastric contents. This is a 12 French suction catheter. When you use a suction catheter, you want to put a little dollop of that lube right over that hole, and then you want to work the suction catheter in and out a little bit so you can introduce it throughout the entire length of the eye gel. I'm going to use a little bit of soapy water to do that. So you can work it a little bit, and then you can push it down the entire distance of the eye gel into the esophagus. And now you can hook this to your suction unit and suction the gastric contents 
from your patient. In closing, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our newest member to the training team. He just relocated here from quite a good distance away, but I think he's going to be a good fit. Um, his sole purpose is that if we identify people that aren't completing their required training, he's just going to come out and see you and give you a little reminder. Let me see if I can find him. Frosty! Hey, Frosty! Introduce yourself, Frosty. Doesn't look like he messed up the camera too bad. Seems to be working okay. I think he's downstairs hanging out by the freezer. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video on the iGel. I hope you find it to be another great tool in your paramedic toolbox. If you have any questions regarding the use of the iGel, please let training know. Take care and have a good one.